Hi everybody, my name is Timo Verbrugge and I'm here together with my uh, co-presenter Ina Prinsen and welcome to our Get More Done with Teams with Teams and Power Platform webinar. This is our alternative for the live webinar that we would have done uh, yesterday, so on the 15th of March, but due to some administrative issues, we unfortunately couldn't provide this webinar live, uh, but we are very glad that you are now watching uh, the recording of this webinar and we may will make sure that you we won't be disappointed. For uh, this webinar today, uh, we are going to look first at a, a small introduction, let's say, of Teams and why we think that Teams should really be leveraged as a platform. In a Prince is going to take up that part. And then we're going to deep dive a little bit into three small cases, three small things that you can actually start doing today uh, to start automating and to start making your life a little bit easier with Teams and Power Platform. So I'm going to now leave it over first to Inna uh, to give her introduction as well. Okay, perfect. Hello, everyone. I'm a product marketing manager for Teams, as, uh, as Timo already uh, introduced me. Um, so today, what I wanted to start with is to start explaining you why we believe that Teams is so unique. So unlike any other point solution for communications or for collaboration, we believe that our approach to teamwork provides a much more holistic solution for our customers. And as such, Microsoft Teams is designed to help people stay connected with chat and calling, what most of you already are doing, but also to collaborate seamlessly by sharing within your teams ways to collaborate asynchronically, asynchronically uh, on different uh, documents and, and different topics that you are working on. And mostly, and this is where we add the most added value, is we help you simplify your work in a secure and in a compliant way. And all of that in one place. In short, Teams is where people come together to get work done as your new operating system. So if you look at the amount of work-related applications in the enterprise that continue to grow enormously, as does the employee usage of those, of those apps to get their job done. So this morning, for instance, I found out from one of our customers that this amount of business apps grows to around 600. Actually, the average organization now has over 200 work-related apps that their employees use daily to get their work done. So can you imagine how many applications people actually use to complete a single task and how much time is, time is actually lost by switching between those different applications? And how much of the workday is actually spent on routine tasks or, for instance, searching for data? And is there an opportunity to simplify your work by adapting your workflows and your processes and your systems right into your collaboration platform where you currently are already working in every day? So as we stated, Teams provide a central place for you to stay connected, productive and in the flow of your work. But we've actually also built Teams as a platform enabling you to simplify your work by leveraging the applications that you use daily directly into Teams rather than having to switch apps all the time. And we've also noticed that on average, uh, every Teams user can save up to 15 minutes a day by having the information directly available in Teams. And we enable this in three ways. First of all, we try to improve your meetings and your chats with ready-made applications right where your teams are working already, in Teams, chat, meetings, etc. Secondly, we optimize your business processes with low-code solutions. So let's be honest, with uh, this whole COVID thing, your business processes that existed pre-COVID have probably changed. Whether they were paper-based processes or in-person review and approvals, the way we work in Teams or the way we work remotely now has changed. And with that lies an enormous opportunity to optimize your processes uh, and Teams provides you that uh, ability to do so because of our tight integration with low-code solutions such as Power Automate for workflow automation or Power Apps for quickly creating apps uh, to provide your users the ability to drive change and to do their work more differently. And then at last, if all this does not suffice, we are also meeting your uh, needs to create custom apps and even more custom integrations um, by also uh, integrating SDKs and other solutions like GitHub uh, and other toolkits that you might need uh, to create your applications within Teams. 
So here you can see an example of how we do this. So you can improve your meetings uh, experience by integrating uh, over more than 600 applications that are available today. Or you can actually, for instance, uh, turn uh, messages into action by, uh, as you can see in this example, creating a work item uh, in directly into your Teams channel or directly into your Teams chat. Or why not use any third party applications such as, for example, uh, Asana to better manage tasks that need to be discussed during meetings and need to be followed up after meetings, as you can see in this example. Secondly, I also talked about business process optimization and automation. Now, we actually in Teams integrate Power Automate to automate your repetitive uh, business processes. And for that, you can use actually pre-built templates or custom rules. Or as already explained as well, you can create any application that you want using the low-code platform Power Applications. Or why not consider building virtual agents and bots uh, to help you get some tasks done? And as said before, if you are really a professional developer and you really want to go into that deep dive integration or you have uh, needs for a very custom uh, built solution, then we also get you covered uh, by integrating with Visual Studio. Or you can also reuse all the apps uh, that you have already built with our SharePoint solutions, or you can also use templates uh, given to you already on GitHub, for instance. So what's next up? Like uh, Timo explained already, today is all about showing you some hands-on, easy use cases of how you can do more with Teams, so stay tuned for that. Or if you need more information, we have you, we have you covered with some extra uh, information links. But also, um, if you want to have more sessions like these, where we really want to give you just some hands-on inspiration and ideas on how to get more work done, uh, we got you covered with some partners of ours um, that are some Teams, um, Modern Workplace and Power Platform champions, uh, such as Tegeka, Rodina, The Flow from Konos and Delaware, uh, who are giving just a session uh, like these in the coming months. So we will uh, invite you with the correct registration page soon um, after this uh, meeting. And now I hand over the word to Timo. All right. Hey, thank you so much, uh, you know, already for that great introduction, and I uh, can't wait to uh, to see those different partner sessions as well. But let's move on to the the second topic of today. So, as Ina said, uh, I have today for you three cases, so three simple things actually that you can start doing in Teams today, uh, together with Power Platform, to start automating certain aspects of uh, of Teams and the the collaboration that you do there. So we'll have three cases for you today. The first of is uh, enabling quick follow-up, let's say, of your team's messages. The second case will be building out your first chatbot. Uh, and the third case will be um, uh, having a, a kind of a simple application to send out adaptive cards in Teams, little small interactive cards uh, to gather, for example, feedback from your colleagues. But let's get started with, with case number one, which is a very quick automation that you can actually set up today to have a way to follow up more easily on your Teams messages. So if I, for example, look at my own way that I use Teams, a lot of different colleagues are using uh, Teams. They are sending me a lot of messages, both messages in channels, so in large groups uh, or in Teams, or messages personally through chat. And so I wanted to have some kind of a way to quickly say, hey, this message is important to me, but not right now. I need to reply to it in a day or maybe in 20 minutes. So just making sure that Teams reminds me, let's say, on those messages. And we can do that through Power Automate. And so Power Automate is part of Power Platform that's also embedded inside of Teams, and it allows you to automate business processes. So this goes way, way beyond just 
plain and simply following up on a message. Uh, but this could be, hey, the moment that we post a certain message in a Teams channel, make sure that that content of that message is pushed towards an external system, for example, or hey, whenever a ticket is created in an IT or an HR system, make sure that uh, certain people on Teams are also getting notified of these uh, of these kinds of tickets. Power Automate also includes an entire approval system in this as well, uh, so you could set up simple approval processes right inside of Teams. But for today, what I wanted to showcase to you is how you can quickly use Power Automate uh, to, to follow up on your messages. So let me quickly actually switch over to Teams right now. So I have my Microsoft Teams here open. Uh, I have here the, separate, the several Teams here in front of me. And the first thing I'm actually going to go is I'm going to go here into the Teams App Store and I'm going to search here for the Power Automate app. So the Teams App Store allows us to get all of these different uh, applications that Inna already talked about. Some of them are by default already available and provide you with some ways to, to automate your workflows. But the application that I'm going to look for today is Power Automate so I can create my own automations and workflows. So normally when you type in Power Automate, this will be the first thing that pops up. You can click on that and then add that into your Teams. What I've done is I've already added that here on the left-hand side, Power Automate. And the great thing is, is that Power Automate comes with a lot of different templates. Uh, so we have templates, so for example, to notify a team when an uh, office form is submitted. Or if you're an IT developer and you use things like application lifecycle management tools, Azure DevOps, you can get notifications on Teams as well or when an alert is triggered in Power BI. So there's a lot of different of these templates already. And actually, there's also a template to follow up on a message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll you down to the bottle. I'm going to see here to all of those different Teams templates that we have available. So that's going to load in all of those different templates. And hey, there is here a template called follow up on a message. So the only thing I have to do is I just have to click on a template, give it a name. It's already pre-populates, connect up to the services, in this case only Teams, click on continue and click on create flow. And that's it. Then I would have that set up. The moment that you have that flow created, it by the way also comes into your home tab. Now that's all fine, but how exactly does that work? Well, if I go, for example, to a team, so I'm here in, in our uh, communication channel and I have a message here from Megan about the digital offsite that we're going to have uh, with all of our agenda. Now, this is quite important to me. I need to look at that agenda and give my approval on it as well, but don't have time right now. So what I can actually do is when I hover over that message, I can reply to it and give it a nice little emoji, but I also have three little dots. And under more actions, I will now have that option to follow up on this message. And so that is because I have deployed that Power Automate, that automation that actually allows me to follow up on messages. What this does is I can click on that. That's just gonna pop up very quickly. You know, when do you want to be reminded? In 20 minutes, in an hour, three hours. For demo purposes, I've also placed one minute in here. Click on Submit. And so what's going to happen is Power Automate will actually send me a message on the chat, giving me a message reminder, hey, you know, you have to still follow up on this specific message. I can click there on view message, and that's actually going to immediately bring me to the correct team immediately to that message, highlight this as, highlight it as well uh, to make sure that I can actually uh, follow up and do the actions that are necessary. So that's it, quick recap. You download Power Automate from the Teams App Store. You go to Power Automate. There's a lot of different templates available. You can search through these templates. One of them is the follow up on a Teams message. Click on create, and that's it. Now we can go a little bit deeper into that because the moment that you have that Power Automate app open, you will see here follow up on a message has now been activated. And you can actually open that up and you can still edit it and you can still change other things in this as well. So for example, if I start editing this automation, oh, and here's my message reminder I sent a minute ago. If I start editing this, I can actually change, for example, the options that are given to me. So instead of maybe 20 minutes, one hour, three hours, I might want to change that little card that is presented to me and give me some additional minutes. Or I can, for example, change the way that the card is displayed when I'm actually being reminded of a message. Or with Power Automate, I can now connect up to over 300 different connectors that we have, 
both from Office, so Microsoft Teams and Outlook and Planner. Maybe I want to get an email instead of a follow-up message on Teams. Or I can connect up to all kinds of different systems outside of the Microsoft ones uh, if I want to, let's say, experiment and if I want to automate potentially processes that go both across Teams and other systems as well. So that's the first little case being able to follow up on messages. I use this every day uh, because I get a lot of these kinds of things in uh, in my, let's say, my team's activity feed. And so it's quite nice to say, hey, you know, this is the important ones. I want to get reminded about that uh, at the time when it's necessary. So quick recap. I, I got... have a question on that one. Uh, Go, ahead, Go ahead. Um, it, let's, let's say that is, this is a, an interactive session uh, anyway. Um, which <laughs> licenses do our users need to be able to work with Power Automate? Ah, that's a very good question. So for this specific case, and so actually for any kind of an automation that you want to do that stays within, let's say, the the uh, office suite of applications, so Teams and Word and, uh, and Outlook, etc., you don't need any additional license outside of your office one. So if you have, for example, uh, an office E1 or E3 or E5 license, that's actually fine. You can do all of the things that I already demonstrated. If you want to connect with certain types of applications, like for example, if you want to connect up with SAP or certain Azure stuff, or maybe your business applications like your Salesforce or your Dynamics, then there is some additional licensing uh, that is required. But for all of, let's say, the standard connectors that we have, which is all of the office stuff and also some, uh, some third party stuff, you don't need anything else outside of your, your uh, office licenses. That's clear. Thank you, Timo. All right. No problem. So quick recap. I got the Power Automate app from the Teams App Store. You can download that already today and you can check out the different templates that you uh, that are available. I set up the follow up on a message Teams template and then there was not even a step three. I could just immediately start using it uh, to do a follow up on messages. So we can automate certain stuff and that's already that's already nice. But let's take it up a notch uh, with actually chatbots. So Teams is actually also great as a platform whereby you can have interactive discussions, not purely with colleagues, but with chatbots as well. Chatbots that could then connect up to all kinds of different systems. So for example, imagine chatbots that could connect up to your HR system and immediately provide information around vacation days or leave or absence, uh, or chatbots that could connect up to your IT uh, system so that users can type in, you know, that they broke one of their devices or that they have certain IT issues and then automatically have tickets created. Now, of course, normally this used to be quite a lot of coding in order to create that kind of chatbots, but with Power Virtual Agents, that is also part of Teams, you can actually start creating a chatbot both from a standard, let's say, FAQ or Q&A page that you already might have internally, or you create one manually, as you see on the screen right now, that actually goes through a set of questions with your users could connect up the different kinds of systems that is needed and provide information to your users in a more interactive way. Even because these bots are then deployed inside of Teams, the bot knows which kind of user is actually logging in and which kind of user is interacting with the bot. So you can even do more personalized requests, like for example, uh, give that specific user vacation or leave or absence days. And it's extremely easy to get started with this as well. It's actually quite similar as with Power Automate. So I'm back inside of Teams. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go once again to the Teams App Store. But in this case, I'm not going to type in Power Automate. I'm going to type in Power Virtual Agents. So normally, first thing that will pop up in here, you can click on that, also click here on Add. And then you can start building chatbots. I've once again placed it here on the left-hand side. And so you see now actually that number one batch above my Power Automate, that's because the follow-up that I did uh, a few moments ago. So it gives me like these notifications on, hey, there's still things to follow up upon. The moment that you have downloaded Power Virtual Agents from the Teams App Store, gives you an interface like this, where you can immediately start building out your own chatbot. So I can just literally click on Start Now. I select the team that uh, is going to be, uh, that the chatbot is going to be part of. So for example, the HR questions and answers team. And then I will be able to give a name to my chatbot and actually start building that out. So I'm going to quickly load that in. Now, what I'm actually going to do here, so I'm going to give that a quick name like HR chatbot 2, for example, because I already created one. 
I can even select the language. We support multiple languages for this, so you can have a Dutch chatbot, a French one, a German one. You can have all kinds of languages supported. Just gonna keep it on English for now and click on Create. Now, while that is being worked on, and that only takes a few moments, let me quickly explain what I actually want to do here. We at Microsoft, we recently announced our Wellbeing Days initiative. So these are actually five paid days that every uh, employee around the world at Microsoft can actually take a vacation due to all of the, let's say, COVID-related uh, issues and stress, of course, that has been that has been uh, causing at our employees. So our global HR department has decided that every employee at Microsoft worldwide can take five days off uh, on the company, let's say. And they created a, a quick FAQ for that eh, because we know how many can we take, when do we need to take it, will we receive this annually? Unfortunately not. Um, is there a time frame by which we need to take? So there is, of course, certain questions that your employees might have. Now we could, of course, place this PDF somewhere on, on the internal site. Or what I can do is I can take this PDF and immediately build a chatbot out of it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to copy the link to that PDF already. Going to go back here into Power Virtual Agents. And in the meantime, my chatbot is created. So what I can do here is I have my chatbot here to the left and I can actually already start talking to this. So I can say hi to this and the chatbot is going to say, hey, you know, hi, I'm a virtual agent, can help with this, like speak to human agent, what can I help you with today? And you see here on the right hand side, I can actually decide what it is that the chatbot says. So I can, for example, change this to hi, I'm an HR chatbot, for example. Uh, let's talk about your vacations. Um, or other HR topics. And I can very easily change the things that my chatbot would say. I can immediately save that, save that out. It's gonna refresh my chatbot. And if I type hi in again, you will see that those messages have changed. So I can now start building this all up manually, but I actually already have this nice, you know, question response thing available for me. So let me just import this and the chatbot will be created for me. So what I can do for that is I can go here to topics on the left hand side. So these are all different types of, let's say, conversation topics that my bot can have. There are certain things that are built in, like for example, this greeting. So, you know, when we say hi, the chatbot needs to respond in some way. Goodbye is another one. So if I type in bye, for example, the chatbot is also going to respond with some standard text. But what I can also do is I can also say, hey, suggest some topics for me. I'm going to adding that PDF. And so the chatbot is now going to use artificial intelligence to look over this PDF, understand that these are several questions with several responses, and it's going to immediately generate certain topics out of that. And so this works with simple PDFs. This works with your internal HR or IT support uh, pages. There are several ways, let's say, uh, that you can actually grab this information. I'm going to see if that comes up here on the suggested one. Eventually, if you're done with your chatbot, you can actually say, hey, uh, I'm going to publish that chatbot directly inside of Teams, either inside of the, the standard team that you currently have today, and any employee can do that, or you can submit it for administrator approval so that it can be used across the entire organization. Power Virtual Agents is ready, so I can click here on suggested topics, and all of these questions have now nicely being analyzed by Power Virtual Agents. And I can add all of these questions actually to the topics or the things of conversation that my chatbot can talk about. And that's it. I've created my chatbot. If I go back here into existing, here are all of these different, uh, here are all of these different topics. I can even add in some additional, let's say, trigger phrases or things that we could uh, talk about in my chatbot. But if I say, hey, reset, Gonna ask that question here. What are the eligibility criteria for the well-being days? Oh, of course, always a, a little problem during the demos. That's typical. But if I would ask that question on what are eligibility criteria for well-being days, uh, then would be a turn on. And of course, what I forgot in this case was turning on the topic so that the bot would actually talk about that. So let me try that again. Here we go. So what are the eligibility criteria for well-being days and the topic and the chatbot immediately know, knew what he had to answer. It even has things like built-in surveys so that you can improve your chatbot over time. And if you're done, hey, click on publish, 
say that you want to share the bot with the organization, and we give you a simple wizard uh, to put that chatbot inside of your entire organization through the administrators, uh, or that you can directly use it inside of your own team that you've already set up. So for example, I already set up a little chatbot. I called it the first HR chatbot a few minutes ago. And so this is a chatbot that is now available again in the Teams App Store, and I can immediately uh, start talking with that chatbot as any kind of an employee. So for example, I could say, hey, you know, I need to create a ticket. Um, and the chatbot is actually in this case going to uh, going to uh, uh, ask me for some additional information um, regarding you know what the title of the ticket is, etc. If you say, hey, this chatbot thing sounds nice, but can you do more than just you know take a PDF and 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 have these questions and uh, make sure that they answer just you know question response question response can i connect this up to for example in my my hr system or it system yes you absolutely can so chatbot uses power automate and all of those different automations that i just showcased and all of those different connectors that we have built in in order to connect up with several ex, uh, existing systems so if you for example in this case use sap success factors or dynamics uh, dynamics for hr you can actually connect that up uh, quite easily. So for example, I can say, hey, I need to ask a question to HR. The chatbot in this case is going to ask for a description of the problem. Uh, so I need more HR chatbots. It's going to ask me for the urgency of the problem. And then it's going to use Power Automate, in this case, to create a simple ticket, which is just placing something in a team's list, generate a simple, um, let's say ticket number for that. So in this case, it's ticket 0002 and give that back to me. And what the HR chatbot in this case does is it actually goes to a team, the HR internal support team. And in the HR internal, internal support team, I have created a simple list that places all of these questions in there, including even the name of the employee who asks it because the bot knows that because I'm already inside of Teams. So FAQ, you can get started with that today and we have some other uh, support and learning resources if you want to go into the more, let's say, advanced side of connecting this up with several systems using Power Automate. So that's use case number two. Hey, you can get started today. You can get to the Power Virtual Agent uh, application from the Teams App Store. You can start creating your first bot inside of a team. You can add topics or ways to uh, have a conversation with your bot either manually or automatically by, for example, importing a PDF with an FAQ. And then eventually you can say, hey, I'm going to submit this actually for admin approval. An admin would approve this application in the same way as any other application at Teams App Store using the Teams Administration Center. I think this is a great example, uh, Timo, of, of how you can actually be more productive by automating a simple process such as FAQ. Uh, people Absolutely. don't have to go to a separate page where they can find the FAQ. Usually you have to search for that page on the internet or wherever it is published, and usually that can take you up to 15 minutes. So there already yep. your users will, will gain time. Uh, and also, uh, unfortunately, again, uh, we are recording this session, but I noticed in our registrations that we have two uh, HR managers that were uh, registered for this for this event. So to you, I, I challenge you actually uh, to try to set up this uh, this uh, chatbot uh, with one of your uh, FEQ uh, documents. And let Absolutely. us know how it works. If you have any questions, do please reach out to us. You can find us on LinkedIn or you can email us. Um, but it would be nice to uh, to get some feedback on on how it worked out uh, for you. Absolutely, would be happy to receive that feedback as well, so we can take it also with us uh, with us internally. And yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. The moment that you have this kind of an HR chatbot, let's say, it's very easy to start adding in additional topics or to, for example, suggest topics from not one but multiple of these FAQ documents. And that way, your users have one single, let's say, source, one single source of truth, uh, that chatbot where they can connect up to and ask questions, uh, ask questions to. And then it becomes even more interactive. For example, as I showcased with the ticket, 
if the all of the FAQs don't answer it, they have immediately an option to, for example, send a ticket out to an HR system. So that was case number two, uh, building out your first chatbot. Uh, let's go into case number three. This is a little bit more complex, let's say, but we just wanted to quickly showcase to you like how internally at Microsoft we are using all of these different things of Power Platform. And we wanted to showcase you the case of the feedback app. So what we actually have at Microsoft is we have quite a lot of different uh, different sellers and different people that are involved and have conversations with our customers every day. And so we from the marketing team organize quite a lot of different events. And so we wanted to get a way one to inform people of, hey, there is actually this event coming up. Make sure that you invite your customers. Uh, but secondly, to get also feedback from the sellers on whether that event is actually good to organize, whether it's the right time to organize those kinds of events. And so, yes, we could do that through uh, through email, but of course, people's emails or inbox is quite exploding. And it's not that much that we ask. It's, it's just, hey, a quick notification of, yes, I have actually invited my customers or not. Uh, and secondly, uh, some quick feedback that they could give. And so Teams and Teams adaptive cards, so those little interactive cards that you can have in a chat or in a Teams channel is the perfect way to solve this. Uh, this is an easy way to get some very quick interactivity with some of your colleagues. And we can create that using Power Platform. So using Power Apps, we actually created a little feedback application. And so as in already mentioned, Power Apps is an easy way for you to start building up small little business applications that are immediately embedded inside of Teams. Um, and these business applications can have any kind of user interface that you want. It's literally uh, like a drag and drop kind of a system, same as with a PowerPoint. And these Power Apps can once again, same as with Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, connect up to all of those different systems that we have, both office systems, but also, you know, things like SAP, things like Salesforce, success factors, whatever it might be. So this is also, once again, available inside of Teams. And so I want to quickly showcase to you like how you can get started with these Power Apps as well and showcase to you the Power App that we have built. So this starts just the same as with these two other cases. I'm going to go here into Apps. And instead of downloading Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, I'm now going to type in Power Apps and probably the first thing that will pop up in here. The moment you've downloaded that from the Teams App Store, you can actually start building out your own applications. We have some great templates for you to get started, things like employee ideas or inspection for first line workers or issue reporting or milestones. But I created my own little app called Event Reminders. So I'm going to quickly open that up here in this tab. So the event reminders application is just an easy way to get some information on, okay, what is the title of the event that we want to send a reminder out of? What is the description, the date, the registration URL, and who do we actually want to send this to? So the email addresses or the people that we want to send this to. These Power Apps work a little bit like PowerPoint, so I can easily add, for example, images in here or text. Or of course, since this is an application, I can also insert things like buttons, or I could maybe even insert things like cameras and pictures and audio and video. So there's different ways, let's say, uh, for me to add certain things here to this application and very easy to move that around. I also added a little button in there to actually send out the event reminder. So what happens in this case is when somebody fills out this form, this will kick off a power automate. It will kick off an automation. And that automation is as, follow, as follows. Hey, when somebody sends out a new reminder, do a little bit like date formatting, but then send an adaptive card, send an interactive card to the user asking to provide feedback and to give some reminder about that event. And so because we have that Teams standard connector, let's say, built in to uh, Power Automate, these kinds of actions of sending these cards uh, is all built in to the system. We even have a built-in designer, so you can easily start designing the interactive cards that you actually want to publish. So this is the card that I'm going to send out. Just has a title, a description, the date, and then a way for our sellers and our other people that are involved with customers to say, hey, yes, I actually already sent invites, uh, some feedback, and then a way to view the invite and to actually submit their feedback. Where is that feedback then going through? Let's go back to the automation. After we have sent that out, hey, 
create something in SharePoint, create something in a SharePoint list, and that list is available inside of Teams. So let's see that in action. What I'm gonna do here is open up the application. So I'm gonna type in my title in here. Uh, so Teams plus Power Platform event. Don't forget to invite your customers to our new Teams plus Power Platform event. And so we have some events going on in April. I can type in the registration or the invite URL in here. I'm just going to take Microsoft.com in this case. And then I can say, hey, you know, who do I actually uh, want to send this to? In this case, I'm just going to send it to myself. So I'm just going to quickly look up the email address that I need for this case uh, so that I can send it to myself. This was, of course, built out very quickly. Uh, you could also say in a Power App, hey, you know, load in all of the different people that are already part of a team or of our group uh, so that you don't have to fill out email addresses as well. And that's it. I can just click here on Submit. I will even get a little notification saying, hey, you know, your card was sent successfully. Uh, and in a few moments, I will actually get uh, this little reminder card as well. And so now a few moments later, you actually see that I have received that uh, that adaptive card inside of my uh, Teams chat. So the Flow bot, which also is part of Teams as well, will send me this little adaptive card. So it says here the title that I filled in, the description, the start date. But now because this is an adaptive card, this is actually interactive. And so I, for example, as a colleague, I can actually very quickly provide feedback on this. So I can I can view the invite and I can actually go you know to the registration page just goes to the Microsoft homepage for now. Um, I can say, hey, you know, yes, I actually already send invites to my customers, can give some feedback, like, hey, great event, and even click on submit. The cards will even update right now and, and, uh, and say, hey, you know, thanks for your feedback. And so the great thing is, as I showcased in Power Automate, we're going to take that feedback and we're going to automatically kind of push it uh, into a little list. And so I can go back here to Microsoft Teams. I have here an event reminders team where I also have that, that app embedded into. But the second tab in my team is called event reminder feedback. And so event reminder feedback uh, is actually a list where all of the feedback from all of these cards that I send out in Teams is being sent to as well. So I can see your team for the Teams Plus Power Platform event, the feedback was great event, feedback was sent by me, and I already invited my customers. So sending out these custom cards and very quickly collecting feedback from from people can be used in several kinds of uh, several kinds of ways. Can be used as we do it at Microsoft to send out event reminders. Can also be used once again in in more let's say IT or HR uh, related uh, related scenarios, or even you know for approval scenarios as well in any kind of a department. All right, so that was it. So you just download the Power Apps application from the Teams App Store create your first application and then add an automation to send, for example, an adaptive card to a person. And so as I mentioned, we already have simple templates for you available, things like employee ideas, inspection templates, these Power Apps, by the way, they can be used both in the Teams desktop application or on the web. They can also be used on mobile applications, things like issue reporting as well. All right, so that was it. So I'm going to leave it back over to Ina to talk to you a little bit about potential next steps that you can take. Yes, so if all is well, you can see my screen now again. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Let me also try to go to presenter mode so you can see it in a whole, all right. Lost my camera. Are you seeing me? Yes. My camera is on? Um, no. Now it is. Okay, perfect. Okay, sorry, I was struggling <laughs> with the whole team for a while there. No worries. Okay, so, uh, so I hope uh, we inspired you on, on how you can actually get a lot more work done with Teams. So as I said before, Teams is not only a collaboration tool, it is not only a meeting tool, it is so much more. It's really all about how can I get more work done? How can I work more effectively by one, automating routine tasks or by two, um, 
creating my apps uh, within the collaboration tools that, that I am currently already working in and, and optimizing uh, the way that we work now, or just by simply um, integrating an existent, uh, an existent business application that you are using daily, uh, such as uh, Workday, such as SAP, into your teams and gain some time. Um, so what is next? Um, so indeed, in the presentation, you will find some link, uh, some links to, to more uh, learning uh, websites and blogs where you can find more information on how to get even more done with Teams. Um, I really challenge you uh, to try to do more with Teams as well. You can look at this uh, recording again and again uh, to try to repeat the steps that, uh, that Timo uh, explained. And then furthermore, we also have a lot of, of, of partners that can actually uh, help you get more done as well. And, and we wanted to continue to inspire you on these types of little use cases that you can work with tomorrow, that you can get started with uh, easily. And therefore, we have partnered uh, with some of our partners that are both modern workplace partners and power platform partners, and that really uh, have those skills to help you get started with these. Um, so we have uh, teamed up. Uh, with these partners that you can see on the slide. And we will kick off again uh, end of April, uh, on the 19th of April uh, with Seheka, and we will finish with Delaware in uh, May. So we will send you uh, the registration link to this one soon. Uh, we will try to um, already do it uh, later this week. Um, so please enroll uh, for one of the following sessions as well. So that's it from my side. Timo, do you have anything to add? No, oh, not at this time. I'm really looking forward to all those different uh, to all those different partner sessions. Uh, so I hope that you uh, have been able to uh, to look at these different use cases and that there was a use case in there that uh, you might found interesting uh, and that we want to deploy right now. So really excited for what's coming ahead. OK, so I think we can conclude this session now. I hope we inspired you. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye.